Hi and welcome. This video is all about what is nowadays known as Maya Square and how you can use it for solo drills. We will not only be taking a look at how the pattern works, but also what skill it aims to teach and how you can adapt it for more variation in your solo training. Now, let's start at the beginning, shall we? In the 16th century, Joachim Meyer published this very diagram in his book with the snappy title Grundliche Beschreibung der freien ritterlichen und adlichen Kunst des Fechtens in allerlei gebräuchige Wieden mit schönen und nützlichen Figuren gezielt und früh gestellt. Durch Joachim Meyer, Freifechter zu Straßburg. Now let's take a look at the pattern itself. How does it work exactly? It has four rings of numbers which are meant to be read from the outside in. Now the goal of this cutting exercise is to teach you to swiftly cut back through and along the line of your previous attack. A quick 1-2 combination as it were, in order to be able to quickly cut around your opponent's initial defense and in fact targeting that same defensive posture. This informs the order and direction of the strikes, so it's actually fairly easy to remember the pattern when you know the trick. The first two rounds of this cutting pattern start on the right hand side, so the very first cut is a right overhand strike. In sources from the 15th century this would have been called an Obenhau, but Joachim Meyer himself calls this a Zornhau. The second strike in the pattern cuts back immediately along the same line, so this will be a left Unterhau. The third strike is always the same type of strike as the second, but from the original side, so this will be a right Unterhau. And then we cut back immediately with a left Oberhau or Zornhau if you prefer. The second round starts at the bottom right with a right Unterhau and the second strike immediately cuts back through that same line attacking the upper left opening. The third strike is again the same as the second but on the original side, so now we are aiming for the right upper opening. Cutting back immediately with a left Unterhau will be the fourth and final strike in this second round. The third and fourth round in this pattern start on the left hand side and you will have to adjust your footwork accordingly. Be mindful of this as you transition from your previous strike, a left Unterhau, into the first strike of this third round, which is aimed at the left upper opening. The second strike will of course cut back again along the same line, so that will be a right Unterhau. And the third strike is then of course another Unterhau, but now starting from the original left side again. Which leaves us with the fourth and final strike in this round, cutting back along the same line, targeting the right upper opening. Then there's only the last round left, starting bottom left, then cutting back, targeting the upper right opening, and then the final pair of cuts starts at the left upper opening, and finally we cut back along the line, targeting the right lower opening. So if you remember the first strike of every round, you can actually remember the entire pattern. Let's have a look at that in action. This example uses basic full length strikes and sideward footwork. Round 1, strike 1, top right opening, strike 2, cutting back, Strike 3, bottom right, and strike 4, cutting back again. Then for the second round, the first strike will be bottom right, strike 2, cutting back, and strike 3, top right, and strike 4, cutting back. After this, the pattern simply gets mirrored, so round 3, cut 1, top left. Strike 2, cuts back along the line, strike 3, then bottom left, and strike 4, cuts back along the line. The fourth and final round then starts with cut number one, bottom left, strike two, cutting back along the line, strike three, top left, and finally strike four, cutting back along that line. When you just start out to learn this pattern, or if you simply want to focus on your basic mechanics, it's of course fine to use these full length strikes in a continuous rhythm. To really understand the pattern, however, it helps to tie the strike combinations together, like a one, two, and three and four. And this is in fact a step in the right direction towards the actual goal of the exercise. What we nowadays call Maya Square is actually a pad drill and it aims to teach to quickly cut around your opponent's defense and actually target that same defensive posture. For instance, in his writings, Maya tells us to aim at our opponent's left ear and then as soon as our sword hits or gets hit, we should immediately cut around aiming for the arms from below. In our solo drill, we can emulate this by stopping every strike in Langenort or long point, or at least in a roughly similar position. From there we can cut around with a new strike, simulating having to cut around somebody's defense. Maya tells us explicitly to keep our cross guards very high during our rising cuts. Above your head actually, so even higher than what is shown throughout this example. This means it depends largely on how well you work your pommel arm, how quickly and accurately you can strike. Now that we know what a drill is supposed to be, let's look at a few variations. First off, the pivot step. If on top of things like structure and edge alignment you focus on speed and power, this can quickly become quite the core workout. 
mind the adjustment of footwork going into the third round, and just like the base variant, end every strike in or around long point or ox. Now letting go of the main goal of the drill in favour of variation, you might try double cuts, adding a short edge cut before every strike in the pattern. Similar to the basic flow drills, you can add a Sturzhau before every overhand strike and a Streichen before every Unterhau. To give your arms and in particular your wrists and forearms a bit of a challenge and to train some slightly awkward transitions, you can run this pattern using the short edge only. During this, mind your extension. Ideally, you'll keep your hands a bit higher and further away from you than what is shown in this particular example. Sticking with the theme of weird edge work, you can also alternate your strikes using the short edge and the long edge for every other strike in the pattern. Or conversely, using the long edge first and the short edge second. Ultimately, this is a four openings drill, not a four particular strikes drill. So we could substitute our basic strikes with something like the Zwerhau. This uses two versions of the Zwerhau. The ones aimed at a high opening are technically called Zwerhau zu dem Ox geschlagen, and the ones aimed at lower openings Zwerhau zu dem Flug geschlagen. You can build on this drill and kinda get crazy with it. For instance, why not substitute every first and third strike with a thrust? Or like in this example, lead with a thrust and then do a combination from the pattern. This still leans on the core of the drill, learning to cut around somebody's defense. Feel free to use your own creativity. Who knows what useful variation you might come up with. Finally, when training at home, remember that the saying any training is better than no training only holds true to a certain extent. It really pays off to focus on your posture, your mechanics and your edge alignment. Because when you're training alone, you are your own coach. And in order to make good progress, you will have to keep yourself honest by critiquing your own performance. Don't be too harsh though, and remember to enjoy the process. If you found this video useful, please leave a thumbs up and hit the bell to get notified when the next video is online. Let me know in the comments what you'd like to see next, and thanks very much for watching.